streamers. Oh. 15? 42 viewers? Wow. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Kisk Chalet Tour. Um, I'll go around this way. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. Great. Right. Thank you for joining us on this very special edition of Jamboree on the Internet. We are live here today at Candesteg International Scout Centre. Woo! Some of you may have heard the bad news that we are, in fact, closed at the moment. Um, this is due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, but we want to keep the dream of the permanent mini jamboree alive. Um, and we, yeah, we want to keep everything going as much as we can whilst following social distancing. Um, so we thought really we'd start things off by taking part in Jyoti. And yeah, I am going to kick things off with a brief history of the centre. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm James, I'm from the United Kingdom. Um, I've been at KISK now here uh, for six months, and I'm the marketing manager. Um, and we've also got behind the camera, we have Andreas. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Andreas. I am from Denmark, and I work as the communications assistant. Good. So together we're going to take you on a bit of a tour, but we're also going to introduce you to lots of other people very soon as well. So we will start with a bit of history. Um, right. Introducing Sir Robert Baden-Powell, if he was a Simpson or some other animated character. It's the best drawing I could do. So um, you can see, you know, trademark moustache, hat. Um, and this man here, the legend that is Sir Robert Baden-Powell, had a dream, a vision, um, at the first World Scout Jamboree in Olympia in London. And he had this dream of creating a place where there would be a permanent mini jamboree experience. Um, somewhere where scouts of the world could gather internationally um, in one place and continue the dream of world scouting. So... There he is, Baden-Powell, Simpson man. And there was lots of people in the audience, uh, including one very important man, Sir Walter von Bonstatten, who was head of the Swiss Scout movement at the time. Walter von Bonstatten, he was so inspired by Robert Baden-Powell's speech that he began looking straight away for a location for the permanent mini jamboree. And he found the old chalet that you can see behind us right now. A beautiful place in the Swiss Alps, in Kandersteg of all places. Um, and here is my lovely illustration. The building right behind me is the new chalet that was built later on in the 90s, but it looks very similar. Um, but yeah, this was the old chalet which he found and he phoned up uh, Robert Baden-Powell and said, or sent a letter or whatever he did back then, and said, mate, I have found the, the perfect place for this permanent mini jamboree. And Baden-Powell was over the moon. He was, he was like, great, this is brilliant. Um, one question he did have is, why is this old chalet here? What's the story behind it? The story behind the old chalet is... The Lochberg Tunnel, okay? So, the Lochberg Tunnel was built to get trains through the mountains in that direction. And um, the old chalet was built as accommodation for all the miners and the workmen. Um, so, they, they stayed here. And when the tunnel was finished in 1913, the... Um, the uh, yeah, it was abandoned. There was no one living here. So it was the perfect place, totally abandoned, in the mountains. No one else was here for the permanent mini jamboree to be. We've got mountains, the Alps, rivers, um, perfect for hiking, campfires, camping, all of that stuff. So 
On the 21st of May, 1923, the flag was raised up the flagpole and the chalet was opened officially. 1923, remember that because in 2023, it'll be the 100 year anniversary of the World Scout Centre. So, yep, very important date. Ten years after the chalet was abandoned and the tunnel was completed, it finally got some life, pumped into it, and it became the World Scout Centre. Very exciting. And in that time, we had many, and still do, have many amazing events here, um, including the first World Scout moot, the fifth World Scout moot, and the ninth World Scout moot. And in 1953... Um, we finally founded our crystal here, all of the fleur de lis joining together, um, which is our iconic logo now here, as you can see. Very nice. Thank you for the zoom, Andreas. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how we got to where we're at with our logo. Um, and that came about from the World Scout moot as well, Camp Crystal. Um, so... As well as, lot, as well as lots of other events, the World Scout Centre, of course, was open to guests. Mainly for Alpine weekends and weeks, where people would come here uh, to go glacier walking, to go hiking, to go rock climbing, to go abseiling. And although the centre was always open, there was particular weekends um, and weeks where it was busier than others, high season. It didn't have... A permanent staff team um, so it was always open right up until the Second World War <coughs> this is a giant bomb uh, to represent that and yeah the center was short for a, uh, was closed for a short period of time it actually acted as a refuge for some French soldiers and incidentally they helped clear the campsite for some of the future camps that we had. There was lots of rubble left on the campsite um, from the, the, the Lochberg tunnel construction. So apart from that brief period where it was closed, the centre has always been open. Um, it's been busier uh, than other times, but um, people have always been welcome here. So what happened next is we finally got a permanent staff team because we got busier and busier. In the, by the 1970s, we had a permanent staff team that were looking after the chalet every day of the year. Um, and although they, were, they did not start wearing pink, that didn't happen until 1989. So we celebrated our 30 year anniversary of pink um, in 2019. Um, although that didn't happen yeah, straight away, we have had staff since the 70s. Um, and since then, we have been growing. My lovely watering can and flower to illustrate this. We have been getting bigger. We've had more buildings, more guests, more staff, more upgrades. Um, and that's been really exciting to be part of. Um, and yeah, we've just grown larger and larger and larger as the World Scout Centre. So today, in an average year, we'll have over 14,000 guests from 60 different countries, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a train going past right now. I might, I might just wait a second. Just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so you can hear me. Okay, so that's the train gone through the Lochberg Tunnel. But yeah, in any normal year, we'd have over 14,000 guests from 60 different countries. With four buildings to accommodate them and over 355 beds. Um, we'll run through some of the buildings later in the chalet tour. And of course, we also have two campsites with space for up to 1,200 guests. And as of... I've kept saying, the centre is open, ordinarily, 365 days a year, seven days a week, excluding during a pandemic flu outbreak. We've had to take a brief pause, but normally you can come and see us in the height of summer and the depths of winter at Christmas, at New Year's. There is no day that we're normally closed unless we need to 
in these circumstances, but we will be reopening very soon, um, hopefully by the summer. So, you may be asking, if we're open all this time, and yes, the staff are still here, keeping the dream of the permanent mini jamboree alive, who does that? And the answer is, there is a, a volunteer team of Pinkies, long-term staff and short-term staff, who are from all over the world. And on that note, I think we're going to go and meet a few of them. They're going to show you the inside of the chalet um, and introduce you to their workplaces, where they're from, what they do. So we'll go upstairs now and I'll pass you on to Katrine. and I'm the reception assistant here at KISK. So what we have here is the front office. It's actually two teams working in here. So on that side, we have the program team. They're all out currently and preparing stuff for summer. And on this side is the reception team. We're the people entering all the emails, entering all the calls from our wonderful guests. And the front office is the first, first place we get to meet all of you guys and not just uh, know you by a booking number, which is wonderful. I also want to show you the coffee bar. Just a moment. Here's the coffee bar. It's a wonderful place to hang out and uh, meet friends from all over the world. But I want to show you my favorite thing. So my favorite thing is the map right here. It's a map of Kandersteg and all the wonderful mountains that are around. And it's a wonderful place to just stand and uh, get inspiration for your next hike for when the hike uh, routes are open. And also you can see Kisk is right there. Um, but yeah, a great place for inspiration. Let's keep going. More pinkies are waiting. So right here we have Andrea. Hello. 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 Welcome to the administration office. I will show you around. I'm Andrea. I'm from Mexico. That's Belinda. She Hello. is the staff development director. She's from Venezuela and France. And well, I will show you around. Here we have all the stationary stuff that we need for our daily jobs. Here we have the finance and administration team area where Stefan from Serbia and Switzerland works and that's my desk. This is uh, Torvald's uh, desk, he's from Denmark and he's working on, a, on an IT uh, project for KISK. This is the house desk. These are the lovely people who work to make the center look super nice and to be tidy and clean and tip top for everyone staying here. So Ona from Finland and um, Steven from uh, Ireland are working here. And then this is a PR and marketing area. You have met uh, James from the UK and Andreas from Denmark. They work here and they keep the magic and the colors and the communications uh, always running and and exciting for everyone, sharing what the dream is about. This is Matthew's desk, he's from um, Ireland also, and he is working the program. And we are now in the SMT office. This is Cedric. Hello. From France. Uh, he is the uh, Internal Services Director. Yes. Um, here is Becky's desk, she's a program uh, director. That's Belina's desk, we just met her. She keeps the, the staff happy, she does recruitment, she takes care of the volunteers. And this is Adriana's desk. She's from Romania. She's our guest uh, services director. She has a lovely dog that is not here today. Many people know him. His name is Akira. He's Spanish. And, well, Adriana takes care of guests and she makes sure that we're all very happy in the center. And now we are going to a very special place, which is the director's office. I think Jack enjoys being here. So this is the director's office. Uh, you see all the planning and things that the director needs to take care of. He basically oversees the uh, operations of the center. He works with the committee. He works to take care of the members of the association. He works with the foundation of the KISK Foundation. And then you will see some very special pictures.
pictures here. These are all the former directors that we've had in the center for many years. You will see some faces that you may recognize. And here is our, our very special man, Baden Powell, who founded KISK. So I will take you now to another very special area. You can see our uniforms there. <laughs> and there is Astrid. Hi! Hi. My name is Astrid, I'm from Denmark, and I work in program. I'm going to show you uh, three of the common rooms that we have here in the Oak Chalet. They're all named after uh, one of the three themes that we have in a program, and the first one is the High Adventure Room, just in here. Come on in. So, our High Adventure program is to empower young people to stepping outside the comfort zone. So, in here, you can meet with other people, planning new adventures, and uh, enjoy a nice campfire. Perfect. We're going to head up to the next one. Our second one is the Eco Adventure Room. This room is to raise awareness of sustainability. In here, you can read a lot about uh, nature and animals. All the books are donated by guests, so you'll find books in all kinds of languages. <laughs> You can also uh, borrow some games from the front office um, and use this room to uh, meet with other people. Perfect. The last room to bring people together to create a better world. And somebody's already using it. In here we have a piano. And uh, if you don't know any songs by heart, you can borrow a music sheet from the... Okay, the next one we're going to go to is uh, Ona, who's going to show you around. She's hiding somewhere. Ona? Oh! Hello! I'm Ona from Finland, and this is Richard from Slovakia. And I am a house system, and he is designated flamingo hat. Don't mind me just hanging out in there. Come follow me, I'm gonna show you the accommodation of the old chalet. So, the old chalet consists of two floors, and as you walk up the floors, you see all these amazing historical pictures that show the history of Kiss. We have 23 rooms and 181 beds, and these room sizes span anywhere from 3 beds to 22. I'm going to show you some of my favorite ones. So, in here, we have the Nordic Room. I think it's pretty obvious why it's my favorite, and it is sponsored by the Nordic Guidance Gas Associations, and was renovated in 2008, so it's a, a relatively new room. Let's go have a look. So, this is one of the rooms in the old chalet. They are all pretty different on the inside and one thing that makes them very different are all the decorations we have. In the Nordic room we've got all the flags up, we've got some maps, we've got anything you can imagine to make it all a bit more Nordic and exciting. Let's go to the other room. So the next room we're going to have a look at is the MOP, the Messengers of Peace, and this is our newest room and renovated in 2017. As you can see, it uh, looks a bit newer than the Nordic room, but we all have our all rooms anyways. We have some uh, messages of peace flag, their mission up there, and just some fun facts and all of that. So, the way the rooms are actually named, as you can see, we have a Nordic room, a messages of peace. We also have a German room, the BSA room, the Australia room. The names are named after the organizations that sponsor them, like the NSOs or the you Messengers know, Peace Organization. And they get to decide what they will name the room, and usually it's after them. Makes sense. So, let's go up one more floor, and once again we have really cool pictures. These are a bit more on the newer side, you can say. Not that many black and white, a bit more in color. So, let's go have a look at the Australia room. This is our smallest room with three beds, but that doesn't mean that it's any more important. It actually has probably one of the most decorations. As you can see, we've got some knackers, we've got uniforms, we've got koalas and kangaroos. 
and everything. And all of this has been donated by scouts or the NSOs. So if you come to KISS and you'll be like, hey, I want to stay in the Saudi Arabian room. That's great. And we'll see if we can put you there. But then you come in like, hey, there's not that much decorations. You can donate it. If you want to make the room a bit more spruced up, for example, you can donate however much things you want to to give it a more of a uh, good feel. And let's go have a look at the last room that we're going to have a look at. And some say it's the best room for some reason. I'm not really sure why. And it is the Irish room. So, this is our Irish room. And once again, we have lots of knickers. We've got some uniforms. And uh, this one's a bit different because we actually have a bunk bed up there. Which is a, a pretty cool thing. This room is similar to the Italian and the Thai room, but what makes this different is the decorations. So, and of course, on each floor, we have a recycling center, because at KISS, we do love to recycle. So you can find this on each accommodation floor. I think that's pretty much it for me. Next up, we're gonna go down the stairs again. You can have one last look at the awesome pictures on the way, and I'll hand you over to Marine. from Bordeaux and I'm the PDA, the Program Development Assistant. So my role is working in programming, trying to develop our amazing activities. Uh, so here we're in the old chalet, so where you've been earlier on, uh, all the way the shop to here. This was the original building which was built in 1906. Um, so to, this building was originally built to be the accommodation and housing of all the workers uh, who were working in um, the making of the bridge. There is a bridge, the Lotion Pass Bridge. And they were here from 1906 to 1913 during the construction. And then when this uh, building was built and became the Scout Centre, this used to be, uh, it was mainly this room here, so this is the main hall that we're in today. Uh, it used to be many things. It was accommodation, it was at one point where the office was. I don't remember exactly, but I think I was still somewhere around here. There was a swing hanging and people in the office were taking breaks on their swing. Today it's a, it's a room that we use for meetings. Uh, we have our assembly and our um, uh, committee uh, from the Scout Association, they meet here. It's also a room that we can um, um, rent out to guests. And actually currently, uh, you can see some tables and some chairs. We have our maintenance team working in here when sometimes it's not too nice outside, uh, repairing some stuff in here. And also at KISK, every morning at uh, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, we have a meeting called Sod of the Day. It's a meeting where all the staff working that day meet up and we, have, we talk about different points of the day and of the week. And uh, currently, with the um, social distancing, the place we do it normally, where it's all couch, we can't do it anymore. So this is our current uh, meeting for every morning meeting. This is our meeting room. And here, you can see a lot of uh, different things. Those are all donations from different countries, different scout associations. Uh, you can see the Gabriel Manstar, which is made in papier mâché. I'm not sure if that is the English word. Uh, and then you can see from Portugal all the, the roosters, whoops, uh, and then all the different ones. So whenever we receive donations, uh, this is our, our trophy store uh, for donations and, and for uh, gifts that we receive and we're really grateful to people. And also you can see, and maybe you've seen in all the chalets, uh, we have all the scarves, so we change them uh, Every, every six months when we do the deep clean. So they were recently changed up. And do you guys know how many scarves we have in total in the center? I don't know if we have a live feed with comments and answer. We do. We do? Ah, do we have guests? 
No guesses. No guesses? Ah, then I guess we can give out the answer at the end of challenge, or if people want to answer the questions, how many scarves do we have around in the chalet? And also here, fun facts about Switzerland. We have a map. And I have a question, another question for you guys, little quiz. Um, in Switzerland, wherever you're standing, how far do you think you are maximum to a lake? So if I'm standing here, the closest lake, what distance would that be to me? Anywhere you're standing in Switzerland. Do we have any guesses? No guesses! Oh, well the answer is really surprising. We're 16 kilometers away from the lake, maximum wherever you're standing in Switzerland. Oh, that's 10 miles if uh, we're counting in other uh, not metric system. And here, if you look on the map and you cross from here to Oshinense. So we are tuk, 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 here to Oshinense in um, uh, this distance, we're 5.8 kilometers, and walking we're 6.8 kilometers. So this is uh, pretty cool, and I would recommend for people to come and see this lake. It's a glacier lake, and it's really amazing. But yeah, so this is uh, our main hall. And I guess now uh, we can go with sunny outside, we can uh, go and meet Cameron, who's going to bring us around the outside. Cameron and I'm from uh, Canada. I'm going to be showing you some of the outside parts of what we have here at KISK. So if you'd like to follow me right down the stairs here. If you look behind me, we have what is called the uh, Sunabli. It is uh, one of our guest accommodations and there we have, uh, so we have uh, several different uh, rooms and also a kitchen where if guests would like to do some self-catering, uh, cook their own food or whatnot, they can do that there. Uh, right over here on my left, we have the uh, guest kitchens. We have uh, three of them. Three guest kitchens. Five guest kitchens, sorry. Um, uh, so if guests staying in the uh, main uh, in the chalet uh, would like to uh, cater for themselves as well, they can also do that here. They just have to book it out. Uh, right uh, here on my right, we have the uh, three flags, uh, three main flags here at KISS. The uh, purple is the uh, Wasm flag, so world scouting flag. The uh, blue is the uh, uh, crystal, fl uh, the crystal flag of, uh, Kendr of the uh, Kendrick Scout Center, and on the left we have the Switzerland flag because our uh, home uh, country here in Kisk is Switzerland, as it is. Uh, if you'd like to follow me right here, right along over here, we have the uh, Kender Lodge, which is uh, another one of our guest uh, housings. Uh, so there's a, uh, also a terrace up there if you guys want to be able to go outside and have uh, some meals up there. There's also a catering or a kitchen down there if guests would like to prepare food down there as well. Uh, our most recent um, upgrade or uh, that we've done here at KISK is right here, the uh, Compass Rose. It was uh, built in 2017. And now if you'd like to follow me right down over here. This is uh, the entrance to the staff, uh, some more staff areas. And we know that a couple of you have been asking questions. Uh, we're going to be having a Q&A session right at the end of the uh, overall tour. And down here we should find... Hi! <laughs> uh, my name is Stephen, I'm from Ireland and I'm the house manager. And welcome to the heart of the chalet, the laundry. So this is where the house team is based. This is where we do a lot of our work. It's where we store a lot of our stuff. So as you can see, all of our bedding. This is our bedding for the old chalet, our bedding for the new chalet, and some candle lodge. Um, this is where we do a lot of our washing. It's where we store a lot of our equipment. Uh, behind me over here, this is the laundry cave. This is where we keep a lot of our cleaning chemicals, all of our hand sanitizer, our disinfectants, everything that we need for cleaning. Um, over here is everything for daily cleaning, our mop heads, our chemicals, and over here is our gloves. Um, every staff member who works in-house gets their own pair of gloves, so we like to keep it all nice and lovely. Over here, this is uh, our deep cleaning plan for everything of uh, what's being deep cleaned, and we like to colour it in once it's been done. Over here is the plant room, it's where we keep a lot of our equipment. 
This is uh, one of our whiteboards. Uh, it's where we keep stuff for the short-term staff, um, any skills stuff, any quick recaps on skills they might need. This is the folding table. Hello. Say hi, this is Fio and Emily. They're from Colombia and Wales. Um, over here, this is all of our pinks and our greens. It's where we wash them and then fold them nicely for all of our staff to use. Um, we have different bedding, stuff like this. Um, this is um, one of our staff walls. Uh, each season we'll put up different pictures. And um, we have more over here, like the spring 19, spring 17, winter 19. They're all around the laundry. And um, over here, this is our whiteboard. This is the center of house. This is where we have all of our um, daily tasks, what we need to do today, who's in charge. Uh, all of these different things live here. This is our meme wall. <laughs> this is where we keep all of our memes. This is the main part of the laundry. Now, later on you're gonna meet Phil, who is probably the hardest working person in the center. But other than that, we've got Tom, Trevor, Hans, and Gertrude, who work night and day to make sure that all of the bedding, clothes, towels, everything is nice and clean for all of our guests. And finally, we have the laundry chute. Yeah, so when guests are finished with all of their bedding, <laughs> it comes down the laundry chute. It's a very, very fun place for all of the kids. Anyway, thank you for coming and visiting the laundry. It's an amazing place. It's the heart of the center for the staff, and it's a wonderful, wonderful place to work. And I think if we go this way... Hello, Bravo to all the scouts watching KISS. My name is Sylvia, I come from Kenya and I'm a spring for 2020. Welcome to this short walk. This is just a corridor and we'll see more when we open here. Over here we have the pellet banner, we are trying to conserve the environment and this is how we are putting in our input. Um, we have the lockers for the long term staff here to have the extra things on. Do you have yours here? Yes. Okay. We have more lockers here for the long term staff again and more storage space over here. Then we have our one of our big freezers here and it's quite cold in here. I'm gonna try and see how long I can stay here. Yes. We have the freezer deep in here. Yes, and that's the fridge. Then to one of the very awesome KISS traditions, we have Smile of the Week Gallery. Every Monday we vote for someone who has been the Smile of the Week. And after being put up on the reception, this is the magic place where the gallery is. Weird enough, it's still a toilet. Yes. Yeah. So many smiles in one toilet. And we have our dry store on this one. We have our PR store on this one. It's nothing so inviting, so I'll just go through it. Two more lockers for the long-term staff. A few of them here. And in here, we have the maintenance workshop. It is a interesting place to do your DIY. And as you can see, they were having some good time while they work on things. It can look like a mess, but to them, this is how it should be. This is how you know work goes on. Um, Clem and um, Andres work here, and he is busy Hello. doing some things there. There's some recycling with the benches, and this is about all about the workshop. After the workshop, this is just an exit. You have seen the outside for the candle lodge. And up there, we'll have our colleague Aiden taking you through the dining hall. Just in a minute, Aiden is somewhere here waiting to show you all where we all eat and have all the good fun eating. Hi guys, I'm Aiden and I'm from the UK and I'm the catering manager here at Kisk. And I work alongside Lisa and Louis. Uh, and we work with the shorties and the helpers to make sure everybody here at Kisk gets fed. Uh, today, they're here cooking some chicken satay. We have Lisa, we have Alex, we have Yutze, and we have Zen helping us out today. 
In summer, we can serve up to 400 people at a time across several sittings with the uh, useful help of some of our machines. We've got a couple of steamers, and we also have uh, a couple of kippers. These are very useful in summer, and they help us cook. They're very big. Oh, hi, Claudia. Uh, she just hangs out there sometimes. But most importantly, I want to introduce you to an absolute legend around here, and that would be the very awesome Phil. Now, we love Phil because he helps us keep the kitchen clean, he helps us keep the dishes clean, and uh, what can I say, everybody just loves him. He is from Switzerland. And um, I would also like to introduce you to two very important machines here also. As well as Phil, we have two very lovely coffee machines. Now, without these coffee machines, I just cannot see that people would be able to run the center. Like, I have definitely seen people here uh, almost every second of the day. Oh, in fact, we have Taro now getting a coffee. So it just shows you almost every day, every second of the day, we have someone getting a coffee. Um, it is definitely a machine that helps us run the center very much so. Uh, and now we're going to go and uh, see if we can find someone else to show you around the rest of the chalet. <coughs> Who do we have next? Yes, a nice Hello, cup of coffee me. makes life easier, huh? Hello, my name is... Let me come here. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Tero, I'm from Finland, and I work here as a helper. As you see, I'm wearing green instead of pink. And uh, for some of you who don't know, greens or helpers are... We are ex-staff members. Uh, and we come back here to help out at the center when it's busy or there's a project that needs more helpers and the pinkies don't have time to do it. And we stay here for two days up to three months, depends. So we, have, we don't have like fixed periods like the pinkies have. Uh, so for example, I used to work here last summer as a hike guide, short-term staff. Then I stayed here after summer as a helper uh, during the training weeks for the autumn shorties and then I came back here last uh, February for the ski week. We, have, we are very busy during the ski week. A lot of guests come here to ski and enjoy the winter and um, then I was here during the training week for the spring shorties, uh, short term staff and now I'm mostly doing maintenance fixing and repairing things here in the chalet or outside the chalet in the campsite as you maybe see I'm not wearing the cleanest uh, clothing but it's good for dirty work uh, but yeah that's about me I'll show you the staff accommodation next so follow up here around the staircase you see staff boards from previous years previous seasons this is the best way to immortalize yourself here at Kandersteg. Um, this is, by the way, the oldest staff board we have. It's from uh, summer 1989, so already 31 years old. Uh, that's the first year with uh, pinkies, before it used to be just staff. Um, so this staff board is like the first challenge for the new incoming short-term staff as a group. They have to design and build their own staff board that reflects their season. Um, they can be creative, uh, only the imagination is the limit. And yeah, there's gonna be a new staff board every season, which means summer, autumn, winter, spring, so four per year. Um, I'm gonna show you where I used to live uh, last summer. So this is the new chalet. First floor, um, and during summer we have so much staff that we, we use these for staff accommodation. Uh, during low season, autumn, winter, spring, these are reserved for guests. Uh, now there's nobody here because it's the situation is what it is. Um, let me show you my room where I used to live last summer. Hello. Uh, 
Ohio. And this is this is it. So the short term staff live here for three months and there's like three people per room and uh, yeah so you get two roommates I had very good ones I had roommates from New Zealand and the Netherlands and it was really really nice living with them um, teaches you a lot of good skills about living with other people here's the staff board from my season summer 19 um, for example, you see there's a lot of hammocks because we liked hammocks. We had hammocks at the chalet and that kind of became the theme for the, for the summer, for the season. So that also is visible on our staff board. Here's me. So we have one hammock for each nationality. And then, yeah, some of the hammocks are more crowded than others. Some of the hammocks are, there's only one person, like, my hammock. Sweet. Let's go to the top floor. And this is where staff leaks um, throughout the year. So low season, high season. So now basically all the short term staff and helpers are living here. Let's ring the doorbell. Yeah, you can hear it in the staff room. This is where helpers live at the moment. We don't know how tidy it is, so let's not open. And this is the staff room. So it means it's a common room for staff. And this is where we spend time, hang out on our days off, after work, in the evenings. This is where we have our daily meetings in the morning. And uh, yeah, this is just a good place to hang around, relax, meet new people, make new friends. Uh, sometimes we have movie nights. We set up a screen, like um, yeah, like uh, for example, we use a blanket uh, or sheet, white sheet, and a projector. And yeah, it's a good way to relax in the evening. Here we have. Mailboxes, we call them pigeonholes, so everyone has their own pigeonhole. Uh, so it's like the mailbox here, pretty much. Yep, also we have like, a lot of books, DVDs, board games. Um, yep, anything you could wish for. A lot of sofas, one hammock only. We used to have three last summer, these. Now we only have one. But it's fine. So, this is the staff area, staff accommodation, a staff room. And uh, let's go back downstairs. And uh, yeah, thanks for following. Back to you, James. Thanks, Tero. Um, okay, that, that is the end of the tour. You've seen all of the rooms in the chalet, behind the scenes, um, and elsewhere. But uh, yeah, we'll head downstairs. Um, lots of, you see this, this, the, this staff board, this is Jack, our director, when he was here in 2013. Um, lots of, they're quite, lots of, uh, very interactive staff boards here, very cool. So we'll just, we'll head back outside and I'll, uh, I'll let you ask a few questions. I've seen there's been lots in the comments. I can see Andreas smiling and laughing. Um, so, yeah, this way. Maybe I'll just sit on these stairs. Oh, wow, look. Um, yeah, that is the end of the chalet tour. Thank you very much. Say, Andre. No, no, it's good. Ah, there was a bad connection, but we're back. Um, yeah, if any of you have any questions now, um, I'm happy to to answer them. Um, I've seen there's been quite a lot of comments. I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to um, 
best Insta I've ever seen. Hey, that's good. Um, where is Kipling? <gasps> Anne, why have you asked that? <laughs> Kipling is missing at the moment. Kipling is our cat that would normally be in the coffee bar, um, but Kipling is missing. Um, how many neckers on the walls around the edges? There is over a thousand. Lots of people have donated them. We haven't counted them all. Um, but yeah, there is at least over a thousand. Is Akira around? Akira is not around. Akira is Adriana's husky. Um, and yeah, Adriana's not in today. But we may see Akira on another evening. Um, can I do the train dance? I don't, I don't know the train dance. Someone's going to have to teach me this. Um, can we apply to work at KISK? Yes, of course you can. Um, wow, there's a lot of questions. Um, what's my favourite necker? I, I like the 2020 necker because I think it's going to be quite a memorable year. Um, so I really like the 2020 necker. How many volunteers do you get every year? So every season we have... Um, every season we have 10 uh, new short-term staff um, at least in spring, autumn and winter between 10 and 12 um, and in the summer we'll have around 40 short-term staff join us um, and we also have a team of about 20 long-term staff um, so there could be between 30 of us in low season around now um, or there could be um, you know, as many as a hundred in the height of summer. Um, do we do any activities with our chalet in Adelboden? Um, we do occasionally meet up with um, the staff teams in from our chalet, which is the the WAG Centre, the Girl Guide Centre. Um, and yeah, we don't tend to do um, joint activities for guests, but there are some there are plenty of hikes that you can do where you can hike over to Adelboden over the mountains um, yeah honours message James how much do you love house I really love house house is my favourite after PR and marketing um, how can I work at KISK um, yeah if you're interested in volunteering at KISK you just need to go onto our website we have a volunteering section yep Jean has replied there kisk.ch forward slash jobs dash vacancies um what is the best thing about living in Switzerland, Ella has asked. <laughs> I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. <laughs> um, Aiden's asking, what about catering? What is my favourite meal? Um, yesterday we had chicken and mushroom pie. That is my uh, favourite meal. Um, I quite like that a lot. Although I do like the fish bake too. What is the best hike? Ah, oh, there are lots of, lots of very cool hikes. Um, if any of you have been here and you know Oshinense, um, that's a, a, a great lake, um, about two or three hours hike from here. Um, and that's very beautiful. But then there's also much larger and longer hikes, three valleys. Um, there's a route for all of these in the coffee bar that you can grab um, if you ever visit. Um, what do you do on your days off? Um, we try and go hiking. Um, we try and go walking. Uh, on kind of go on personal adventures, cookouts, campfires, um, skiing in the winter. Uh, all those kind of things. We are just like you guys, uh, a bit limited. Um, show us the train. Everyone wants to see the train. Hang on. Can you see the train? Oh, yeah. Oh, there is the end. Right, the train is gone. Um, yeah, what do we do on our days off? Yeah, I mentioned quite a few things there, but we are a bit limited in what we can do as well here because um, just like everywhere else around Europe and, and around the world, we are um, in a state of, yeah, kind of social distancing and not going out as much. Um, as we would like, um, so we're, we're having to, to cope with that here as well. Um, yes, Lisa's going to visit when this is all over, that's good. Do the dance, I don't know the train dance. I'll, 
Well, before Jyoti finishes, we will do the train dance. We have an international campfire coming up, so maybe that is a perfect opportunity. Um, what are using the people in the centre with the corona situation? What are we? I guess maybe that is a. I guess that question is, what are we doing whilst the coronavirus is is happening? So all the staff are staying here. We're continuing to work. Um, some of the long-term staff are working from home. Um, oh, hang on! I've got some volunteers for the train dance. I'll answer this question, but yeah, we're um, we're uh, yeah. Some of the long-term staff are working from home. Um, we're social distancing, um, staying two meters apart as much as possible, and. Um, yeah, we've still got lots of work to do. Uh, spring is all about preparing for the summer, so when we do reopen, we'll be ready. Um, so yeah, we're keeping busy. But before any more questions, I'm going to show the train dance. We've got some people here. Um, let me just flip the camera. Uh, one sec. So, the train dance happens when the train goes by. And we are outside. And you can't hear what somebody's saying, so you awkwardly dance for like 45 seconds to wait for the train to go by. And it can be any dance that you wish. Okay, right. There you go, that's the train dance. Apparently, <laughs> whenever a train goes past, we just start awkwardly dancing until the train is gone. So there you go. Staying two metres apart, of course. Uh... Okay, um, that is it for now. Um, thank you, everyone who tuned in. Um, we will be doing more of these throughout the weekend. That's all we've got planned today, but we might be doing a few other um, small uh, broadcasts as well. But just to let you know, we have the International Campfire tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. Central European time. We'd love for you to join us. Um, we will be doing some acts and performances, lighting the fire in the usual International Campfire way uh, at Kitsk. So that's tomorrow night, Saturday. On Sunday, we are doing a quiz. Um, you need to download, not download, but you'll need to use um, a website called Kahoot. We'll be making a quiz and hosting that online for you guys to take part in. Um, and yeah, as I say, we might be doing other little bits um, so you can ask us questions and things then. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for joining us, and we'll we'll see you again soon. Please please get involved in the other activities. Um, if there if you have any big requests, we'll be looking through the comments and make sure we cover them um, or answer any of your questions um, or requests about dances and all sorts. Any requests about the international campfire, let us know too. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, we'll look through all the comments. I think there's going to be a lot, um, and yeah, see what we can do in the next couple of broadcasts. But for now. Goodbye. See you later.